and welcome back to another episode of MTG Alpha. I'm Anthony, and I'm here with a, another paper deck tech episode. Um, so today's episode is going to be on Corvold, Fey Cursed King. Corvold is a five mana Jund, uh, two black, red, and green. Um, it's a four four flyer. Uh, whenever Corvold face King. Whenever Corvold enters the battlefield or attacks, sacrifice another permanent. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Corvold, and you get to draw a card. So, this deck is all about ramping, sacrificing things. It's basically Jund Landfall with sacrifice shenanigans. Um, I have some like backup legendaries in here since Corvold is like like a kill on site sort of commander so there's obnixilis uh, which has a landfall ability whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may have target player lose three life if you do put three plus one plus one counters on uh obnixilis so there's a lot of landfall in this this can get really big really quickly and you can drain out an opponent taking three life each time a land enters so it's definitely another threat that if everyone's focusing on Corvold, then they're going to miss out on these other threats here. Uh, another one is Lord Windgrace. So Lord Windgrace is a Planeswalker. You can discard a card, then draw a card for its plus two ability. If a land is discarded this way, you draw an additional card. So tons of card draw. Getting things, lands into the graveyard to, uh, you know, have something to target with his minus three ability, which is return up to two target lands from your graveyard to the battlefield. So both his abilities work well with each other. And then the minus 11 destroy up to six target non-land permanents, then create six two two green cat warrior creature tokens with forest walk. Uh, we actually have a one V one episode where I played, I was playing Corvold and I was able to get Lord, Lord wind grace out and I was able to activate his um, last ability so go check out that episode. Uh, it was pretty cool. Get Rog Monster. It's uh, three colorless, a black and a green. It is a 6-6 six, six frog with death touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you sacrifice a land. So again, we want lands in the graveyard so we can do other cool things with them. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. There's a lot of lands in this deck. So as much as we're sacrificing them, we want to be able to keep that engine going and draw into more lands to cast and whenever one or more lands are put into your graveyard from anywhere draw a card so it might seem like you're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage with Gitrog, but you know all of these abilities work well with each other especially in a deck like this multani um it's uh it's got reach and trample and it's uh gets plus one plus one for each land you control and each land in the graveyard so at all times, this is going to be a pretty pretty big creature with Reach and Trample. You could pay two to return two lands you control to their um, to their owner's hand and then return Multani from your graveyard to your hand. So it's pretty hard to, to keep dead. Um, this is sort of like a last resort legendary. Omnath, a Locus of Rage. Uh, costs three, two red, and two green. So seven for a 5-5. Five, five. It has a landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. When it dies or another ele elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to target creature or player. So lots of 5-5 five, five elementals and if any of them die, somebody's taken 3. Or you can, you know, send that towards one of their creatures. And then Marin costs 2, a black, and a green. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. Now, um, there's definitely some of that going on in this, and I'll, and I'll show you in a bit. At the beginning of your end step, choose target creature card in your graveyard. If it's cards converted mana cost, which is this up here, that's you'll, you'll hear to this referred to as uh, CMC, or they recently changed it to mana value. But if, uh, if that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters, on Marin, uh, you uh, you can return it to the battlefield. Otherwise, you put it in your hand. So every every end step on your end step, 
you're going to get something out of your graveyard, either into your hand or directly onto the battlefield. So this is pretty cool. Um, what ha ends up happening mostly in this deck is like uh, Spore Frog, just constantly sacrificing and coming back to the graveyard. I'll show you what Spore Frog uh, does in a second, if you're not already familiar. All right, so we, you know, like I said, Corvold's like a kill on site commander, so we definitely want to protect him at all costs. And, um, you know, even if it's too late, we can always protect our other um, backup commanders, you know. So, uh, Lightning Greaves, you know, pretty pretty uh, typical two, two mana, colorless uh, equipped creature has Haste and Shroud. So, that is actually really good in Corvold, because even if somebody's going to find a way to remove the Lightning Greaves and deal with Corvold, because they need to, then at least we can get some damage in with the Haste. Um, it's zero to equip. So, you have to cast the card... And then the casting it puts it on the battlefield, and then you have to pay the equip cost to attach it to a creature. For those of you who are uh, more new to the game or unfamiliar with that, Swiftfoot Boots is the same thing, except uh, it gives creature hexproof in haste. So the difference between hexproof and shroud, hexproof, you can still target it. Shroud, you're not able to target it. So shroud makes it so nobody can target it. And the downside to this versus running lightning greaves is that the equip cost is one. Lightning Greaves is zero, so you can get Lightning Greaves out much earlier in the game. Black Blade Reforged, a two-mana equipment, so you pay two for it, and then you have to pay the equipment cost. Now, if it's a legendary creature you're attaching it to, which is definitely what we want to do, then it only costs three, but if you equip it to anything else, it's going to cost seven. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. So, that's a lot of lands. It, it, can, be, it can be 12, you know. Pay two, pay three to equip it, now it has plus 12, plus 12. It's just... You know, a little beefy thing. Corvold is, um, you're more likely to win with Corvold by dealing commander damage. It's really easy to get Corvold big. You know, you only have to deal 21 uh, commander damage to a single player to knock them out of the game. Uh, versus bringing their life total down to zero when it starts at 40. You know, there's various ways to win. But typically, this is what you want to do with Corvold. You want to... Uh, just deal commander damage, which is very easy. So Black Blade, Black Blade Reforged is uh, pretty cool to do that. So there's some like tutors in this deck. Um, this is an interesting one. I really like this one when I when I really found out about the card. It's a one mana sorcery. You search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Now it has Delirium. If there are four or more cards um, among card types among cards in your graveyard, so. Um, instant, sorcery, creature, enchantment, artifact, those are all card types. If, as long as you have four or more, which is really easy, we can easily put, probably be a uh, spore frog creature, um, a land, instant, sorcery, that's four right there. Uh, and then if, if that's true, you get to search instead for a creature or land, reveal it and put it in your hand. So one mana tutor, search for any creature it's so it's so good and then your standard demonic tutor this is sort of like the um the the standard for for tutors a two mana sorcery search your library for a card put it into your hand shuffle your library all right so this is going to be the ramp stuff here so um you know ramp and and card advantage things like that just ways to get us ahead in the game solemn simulacrum you know, typical four mana, two, two creature, and enters the battlefield. You get to search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tap. Now, there's a lot of landfall triggers, so anytime we can search our library for a land, put it on the battlefield, then that's going to trigger something. So this can, you know, help get value out of other things in the deck. And then when it dies, you get to draw a card. So we can get a landfall trigger when it enters, and then we can sacrifice it to draw a card and, you know, Corvold, sacrifice a permanent, he gets a plus one, plus one counter, draw a card, then this ability will resolve, then you get to draw a card off a of Solemn Simulacrum, so we want things to sacrifice, we want to put things into the battlefield, we want to cast creatures and things that are going to get us lands to put on the battlefield to activate landfall abilities, and then we want to sacrifice those things, so like these, these like kind of double as like sack fodder and, and uh, you know, landfall triggering things. So Fairhaven Elf, uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped again, and then we could sacrifice it. Wood Elves does the same thing, except you get to search for a forest. So that could be really not just a basic land, but, you know, a dual land. Um, sacrifice it, you know, sack fodder. Crop Rotation, so 
We cast this, we sacrifice a land, that triggers a Corvold's ability, we get a plus one counter, we draw a card, and then we search our library for a land card, put it on the battlefield, that activates a landfall ability. So a lot of things in this deck you're going to see are, are just like that. Uh, you know, typical soul ring, just for some early game ramp. Sakura Tribe Elder, it sacrifices itself, and when you do, you get a land, basic, uh, tapped, so sack, landfall, those are the two things we want to do. Thunderscape Familiar um, uh, has first strike, but you know it's kind of irrelevant. It's basically just black spells and green spells you cast cost one less to cast. So this is just to you know make some of those bigger spells a little bit easier to cast, even though they're usually not hard to cast anyways. Arcane Signet, two mana. Taps one for any color in your commander's color identity, which would be these pips. These are called pips. So... Those colors right there, Arcane Signet would tap in this deck for a black, red, or green. Spring Bloom Druid, same thing, enters the battlefield. You get to sacrifice a land, you get the sacrifice ability. Search your library for two basic lands, put them on the battlefield, tapped, and then you can sacrifice this. So this is actually a really good card in this deck. Um, Harrow, as an additional cost, sacrifice land, search for two basics, put them on the battlefield. That's two landfall triggers, um, a sacrifice trigger. And then the ability resolves. Farseek. Search your library for a, you know, in this case, we're looking for a swamp or mountain. Put it on the battlefield tapped. So again, if it says swamp or mountain, you can search for anything um, that says swamp or mountain on it. So I could just show you quick. Um, so these would be basics. So if it says search for basic land, you got to search for a basic, which only taps for one color. Now, if it says search for a swamp or mountain, well, look at that. We could search for a swamp mountain. So we're looking for a swamp, bam. It's, it, dis, it didn't say we could look for a forest, but we could look for a mountain. That's a mountain. And now we have green on the battlefield as well. So just in case uh, any of you are not familiar with that. Three visits, sort of same thing. Search your library for a forest card. It comes in untapped though. So this card's good. Two mana. Court of Bounty, when enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch, which means at the beginning of your end step, you get to draw a card. Um, if somebody attacks you while you're the Monarch and deals damage to you, combat damage, then um, they become the Monarch, so you lose that ability. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So there's some ramp there, landfall abilities, and uh, if you're the Monarch still, you get to put a creature or land from your hand onto the battlefield. Super powerful card, um, just printed recently in Commander Legends. Ramanap Ex Excavator. So all the lands that we're sacrificing and putting into our graveyard, we can play those from the graveyard. We can play lands from our graveyard with, with this card. So very powerful. What's great with this is, you know, you can just, you can get one of those fetch lands that tap, sacrifice, search for a land, and you can just keep doing that. So you can just keep sacrificing a land, putting it in the, the, the graveyard, and if you can cast more than one land a turn, you, you, it's, it's tons of landfall abilities, you know, landfall triggers. Um, another card that does that is Crucible of Worlds. This card's more expensive because it's colorless, so you can put it in any deck. So, World Shaper. Whenever it attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library, or, yeah, yeah, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, which you kind of want to do. And then when it dies, you put all lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. That's a lot of landfall triggers another thing that does that is scape shift sacrifice any number of lands so bam sacrificing things multiple triggers and then search your library for that many land cards put them on the battlefield tapped then shelf your library so multiple sacrifice triggers multiple landfall triggers this could be a game winning card right there splendid reclamation return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped that's several landfall triggers and reshape the earth um, so nine mana, not too hard to cast in this sort of deck. Search your library for up to 10 land cards, anything, basics, duels, whatever. As long as it says land on it, put them on the battlefield tapped. So pay nine mana, get 10 landfall triggers more if you, yeah. Um, Wayward Swordtooth, you can play an additional land on each of your turns. We want to play as many lands as possible. 
Um, it's also a three mana five five as long as uh, it can attack and block as long as the other city's blessing, which means you control ten or more permanents. That includes lands. Dried of the Elysian Grove. It's another creature that lets us play additional lands on our turns, and it also turns our lands into uh, every land type, basic land type. So we don't have to worry about tapping a forest for green or tapping a mountain for red. They all just tap for whatever color we need. Uh, Courser for Crufix. Um, Course Courser of Crufix. Uh, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may pay, play lands from it, and whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. So, really good. Now all those landfall triggers turn into gaining life. Azusa, you can play two additional lands on each of your turn. So these all stack. You play one, then you play two additional, and then you play. You can play another additional. So it's it's three additional now. You're playing four lands a turn, and then sacrificing them. So. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to get to the removal here. Acidic Slime, uh, when it enters a battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. And then it has Death Touch, so we want to keep it on the battlefield as long as possible. You could take something out um, if it deals damage to a creature. And then we could always just bring it back if we have to. Um, and if we really, really want something to sacrifice, creatures are good to sacrifice. Damnation, destroy all creatures. Last resort sort of thing. If we have Omnath on the battlefield, then all of those elementals... If we say, okay, yeah, we might actually be able to take out or, or, or uh, win if we just can get these, you know, elementals to die. Damnation. Everything dies. Maybe we have the advantage because we have more lands and, um, you know, more more mana to mess with. Less cards, you know, less lands to draw into the graveyard. So we're just going to be drawn into gas. And then all those elementals are going to deal damage when they die. The devil, you know, three mana instant. We can destroy an artifact creature or planeswalker. Assassin's Trophy, two man instant, destroy target permanent in opponent control, so can destroy anything, including a land. They do get to search for a basic and enters the battlefield untapped. Chaos Warp, the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent, they put it in the battlefield, so it's a little bit of a gamble, but it's fun. I kind of like this card. Um, it's instant speed, and yeah, you can you know take out someone's commander it'll go to the command zone they'll shuffle the library anyways reveal the top card if you're you know playing against like a storm deck or something like that they're just going to draw into a instant or sorcery so it's even better in that case abrupt decay so can't be countered destroy target non-land permanent with cmc three or less converted mana cost or mana value yeah just good removal cost of caterpillar you can pay two sacrifices Destroy target uh, artifact or enchantment, and yeah, you can bring it back uh, with Marin or with you know whatever, and just do it all over again. Just keep doing it every every turn. So this card, Valakut Exploration, it has a landfall ability here. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play it as long as it remains exiled. So there's a lot of um, advantage to that. And then at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with it. You put them into your graveyard, which good, um, and then deal that much damage to each opponent. So that gets pretty crazy. Maelstrom Pulse, destroy target non-land permanent and all other permanents with the same name. Take out tokens, you know, take out any permanent for three mana. Um, this is Putrefy. So it's a, it's a three mana, and you could destroy, um, I believe it's destroy target creature, can't be regenerated. So... You know, I just uh, I just switched it out with this. I actually don't really play with Putrefy, but like, I I I took a card out just to add this, just because I like the artwork. So I was like, I forced myself to add Putrefy in this deck, just because I really like this Japanese card. All right, so these should be the um, things that are going to help with the land stuff. So, Rampaging Ballas, uh, six mana, six six with Trample. Now we're gaining value from all those lands entering the battlefield, and whenever one enters the battlefield with this. Uh, you get a 4-4 green beast creature token. So going to go wide with the tokens. Tireless Tracker. Um, it should say landfall there, but whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. So you create a clue token, which you can pay two, sacrifice it to draw a card. When you do, you um, put a plus one, plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. So now you have landfall abilities, things that are things to sacrifice, a lot of synergy there. Lotus Cobra's uh, landfall ability says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. So even if you scapeshift or something and you get 10 lands or whatever, 
they enter the battlefield tapped, but you still get the mana from those as long as Lotus Cobra is out in the battlefield. Got Eternal Bantu. Um, it's a 5-6 with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of permanents or draw that many cards. So drawing cards, drawing cards again with Korvold, making him bigger if he's on the battlefield, uh, sacrificing things. Um, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. And uh, when it when Bantu dies, you can put him uh, onto the uh, top of your library, third from the top. So really hard to kill. Need for Speed is great. Like I said earlier, with um, the Swift Foot Boots and stuff, it's good to get um, give Corvold haste or something just to try to swing in as quick as possible before he becomes a target. So this is good. A one-mana enchantment. Sacrifice a land. Target creature gets haste until end of turn. So you can acti- activate that ability as many times as you want. So it ends up being, being really good to get multiple sacrificing triggers. Ugin's Nexus. So... This is really good. This this could possibly win you the game. So if you if you sacrifice this, if this is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you exile it and take an extra turn. That could be just what you need to to swing for lethal with Corvold. And you can sacrifice this on attacks with Corvold. It's, it's really easy to sacrifice stuff. So Ugin's Nexus, really good card. Another possible game winner would be Brass's Bounty. So as long as Corval is out in the battlefield, for each land you control, which could be a lot, 10. So say you have 10 lands, you create 10 treasure artifact tokens with, you know, that tap and sacrifice for, for mana. Lotus Cobra synergy there. There's just so much stuff. Tons of, ma- uh, um, you know, mana to, to gain from that. And the sacrificing abilities, the landfall abilities, it just works with everything. Chandra's Ignition, uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. So anything like um, Obnixilis or Corvold, you know, saying that they're a 25-25. Okay, well, let's pay five, deal 25 damage to each opponent and each creature. That could easily win you the game. Goldspan Dragon, five mana, four, four, flying in haste. Whenever it attacks or becomes the target of a spell, you get to create a treasure token, which taps sacrifices adds two mana of any one color so it's um it's something to just kind of throw off your opponents a little bit give them something else to target you have the treasure tokens that you want to create to sacrifice stuff and uh it's just a just a fun card to play with blood Gast is something else you could sacrifice because um it has a landfall ability whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you may return it from the graveyard directly to the battlefield so you could sacrifice it and then a land enters, and then it comes back into the uh, onto the battlefield from the graveyard, and you can do that as many times as you want, as well as many times as you can. Spore Frog, uh, one mana, one one. Sacrifice it, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So it's just something to sacrifice constantly. And with Marin, you can constantly bring it back to the battlefield easily. So it just it it's pretty crazy. Vraska. So um, I do really like Vraska. I like this Planeswalker. Um, it does have good synergy too. You can plus two to sacrifice uh, another permanent. And so any permanent land would be the best probably. If you do, you gain a life and draw a card. You can minus it to destroy target non-land permanent with converted mana cost three or less. And if you can do its ultimate ability, minus nine, you get an emblem. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to player, that player loses the game. So, that could, that could be any creature. Um, jury, Master of the Review. Uh, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Jury. When it dies, deal damage equal to its power to any target. So, all the things that you're sacrificing, Jury gets bigger. And then you can sacrifice Jury to just fling damage at any opponent or any target. Uh, Mayhem Devil. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any target. So any player sacrificing any permanent deal one damage to any target. All those lands you're sacrificing, dealing lots of damage. Um, and then a few cards left here. Scavenging Ooze. Um, just just a good card. So you can pay a green exile uh, target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature, you get a plus one, plus one counter on it. Otherwise, you... Uh, or no, and you gain a life if it's a creature, so... This is, uh, you know, I don't know, just uh, some graveyard hate against your opponents. 
gain some life, get some counters. Eternal Witness, when it enters the battlefield, you return target card from your graveyard to your hand. All the things that are entering the, the graveyard, you can get back. And Veil of Summer, you know, is just another just random good card. Uh, one mana instant. Uh, draw a card, and if opponent casts a blue or black spell this turn, spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanence you control gain hexproof from blue and black till end of turn. So, yeah, it's a pretty good card. And then uh, quickly wanted to look over at the lands here. So, because this is a landfall deck, and lands are pretty important. This is an interesting one. So, when it enters the battlefield, you sacrifice it unless you return a non lair. So, pretty much any other land um, that you control to its owner's hand. Um, it's cool. It doesn't come in taps, so you can just tap for all those colors. And if you want, you can um, just sacrifice a land off of that. Other lands to sacrifice and get abilities from. Rocky Tar Pit is like a slow fetch. comes in tapped, but then you can tap it to sacrifice. Search for a swamp or mountain. Prismatic Vista. Pay a life, sacrifice, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield. So sacrifice and landfall triggers here. Crystal Vein, you can sacrifice it to add two colorless mana. So you can keep tapping it for colorless until you finally say, okay, now I want to tap it. I want two colorless and I get that sacrifice trigger. Command Beacon. Again, Corvold uh, becomes like such, you know, such like a, a target. So Command Beacon's really good in this. You can sacrifice it and then bring Corvold from the command zone um into your hand so it's a way to cheat out that commander tax and then you can constantly recast command beacon so it's a little makes things a little easier to cast Corvold. and then you have your regular fetches pay a life sacrifice it search your library for a swamp or mountain so there's bloodstained mire wasteland sacrifice ability destroy target non-basic another slow fetch um the the real fetch Fabled Passage, all these tap and sacrifice and search for things. These are the basics I'm running in this deck. All right. And then um, some of the dual lands. All right. So I just got these. I've, I have, like, I'm sitting on, like, so many rares that are worth, like, a couple bucks. And the they just keep going down in price. And when they get printed, reprinted, they just go to, like, nothing. When they rotate out of a format, they go down to nothing. So... I finally decided like, you know, I'm just going to sell as many rares as possible and just start putting those into dual lands since these are on the reserved list. You know, it's just like a good long-term value. I'd rather sit on these than sit on rares that are going to go down to like pennies. But yeah, so this is really good in the deck though. Um, it's obviously an older card, but otherwise it would say forest mountain or mountain forest here. So you can search for this. If it says search for a mountain or a forest, you can you could go search for this out of your uh, library, and then it comes in untapped. So, Badlands is another one. It's a mountain swamp, and then here's another example of that. So, swamp mountain, you can search for this. Um, except these only come in untapped if you pay two life. Stomping grounds, overgrown tomb, same deal. These are from Kaldheim. These are really cool. Um. They, they enter the battlefield tapped, but you can search for it. And it's a snow permanent. Not that that matters in this deck, but the fact that you could fetch for, for this and it's a duel, it's pretty cool. So we got that. Command tower, obviously. These are going to help like filter our lands. So these are like dual lands that have some sort of stipulation or filter lands that just kind of like help fix our mana. This deals damage if you tap for a color. This has to have two or more opponents coming untapped. Um, so... You know, this you get to choose. Do you want to play, um, cast it as black or green? Enters on either side. Um, yeah, same thing. So it's basically it. These are just to kind of like get us the fix our mana. Oh, and Vesuva just enters as the copy of any land on the battlefield. So very versatile. And yeah, that's it. So. Yep, that's my Corvold deck. I uh, just wanted to go over that with you guys. Um, this is one, probably one of my like top commander decks. Um, I really enjoy playing this deck. So um, We do have a, a 1v1 gameplay episode with Corvold. You can go check that out. Probably do a couple more at some other point. So, um, yeah, I'll have a, a link to that episode in the description. You'll also see it um, show up uh, in the video in the beginning. Um, I'll have it linked at the end as well. And... Um, yeah, um, I'll have a link for the, the complete deck list, deck list in the description as well. 
So you can check that out and get some ideas. Um, someone let me know, you know, what what would you put in the deck? What would you take out? What do you think is just not really that good? What what do you think what do you think I'm missing? Is there anything I'm missing that'll make this deck better? Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. Peace.